Welcome back, guys. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. This is day two of our series on one Zentangle a day. Um, if you remember from yesterday, we talked about making a letter mark with your initials. We made a couple of patterns, and we talked about the 11-step process. Really, I say four-step, but the, the process of how to make a Zentangle tile. Today, in day two, we're, of course, going to have some more uh, tangles, some more patterns to create, which we'll do in just a second. But we also, in day two, we talk about each tangle having a tonal value. Now, a tonal value means how light or how dark it is. So, like, if we look at this Zen tangle here, we can see that this pattern, uh, which is called the Knight's Bridge, this pattern has uh, a lot more dark space, which makes it overall makes that pattern darker. Whereas this pattern has a lot more empty space, which makes the overall pattern lighter. So we've got lighter on this side, darker on this side. And so you can use that for contrast to create some, some areas where things pop off the page. Because, you know, this pattern is lighter than the ones around it. Um, so that's something that you can do uh, to make your Zentangle tiles more interesting. And uh, again, just like we talked about with some of these processes from last week, a lot of these processes are helpful uh, not just for abstract art like Zentangles, but for any kind of art. The other thing that uh, we're focusing on today, before we, I'm going to do this kind of out of order, before we jump into the patterns, I want to talk about the string. So, uh, you notice here there's a whole bunch of different examples of strings, and the, the purpose of a string, we talked about it yesterday on the day one, but the purpose of a string is to break up the big area into smaller areas. So, um, for example, if I had a square tile and then I wanted just like maybe three different uh, sections, I could just do a simple smooth curve like that and I have one, two, three different sections. Maybe I want a lot of smaller areas uh, to fill in so I can make a lot more patterns. Maybe I want to make five or six patterns. Well, I can have that string bounce around several extra times. So now I have five areas here. Or maybe I could have it loop around itself. And, you know, so there's lots of different things that the string can do. And it gives us quite a few different examples here of different ways that strings can be made. You notice that some of them are kind of spiderwebby, and some of them are more loopy, and some of them are more jagged or zigzaggedy. And there's really no wrong way to do it. And some of these have like one continuous string. Some of them have several that go, you know, separate from each other or that loop over each other. Sometimes they even go outside of the border. And so there's a lot of different ways to do this. This one's just a bunch of loops, just a bunch of like oval shapes. No wrong way to do it. And so now that we've talked about the tonal value of patterns and the different ways of making strings, I'm going to go back to the middle here and actually show you how to do these three different patterns or tangles. And as always, remember that anything that's done in red here, you do with the pen. And then on the last one or two steps, there might be some shading. So, the Knight's Bridge is super simple. Basically, it is a checkerboard pattern. Uh, but notice that the lines are curved instead of straight. So, vertical lines that are curved. Horizontal lines that are curved. And you notice from here, they could be diagonals instead of horizontal or vertical. It could be any direction. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm actually going to switch to a larger pen, this one's a 08, to fill them in because, uh, you know, if you use a smaller pen, that'll take longer. But the trick for making a checkerboard pattern, I see a lot of times students in my classroom try to make a checkerboard pattern and they'll like darken in one box over here and then they'll jump across the page, and then they'll darken in a box over here, and they'll jump around and around and around, and then they find out 
that they're not making a pattern out of it. So the way to the trick, if you want to make sure you get every other square in every direction, uh, you don't want to darken in this whole row and then skip a row and then darken in a row. You want uh, diagonal. So these these two meet at an edge, so it's going to be black and white, but these two meet at a corner diagonal to each other. So I'm, I'm going to go on the diagonal across the corner and darken this one in. And if I always move uh, right next to one that I've already done, then I, I know that I'm going to get them in the right order. If I skip around and jump around the page, then I'm going to mess things up. Like if I try to do one over here, it's I'm not going to know which one to do. Uh, so I, I like to go in a zigzag pattern. So I went up and over, down and over. I'll fill this one in. Up and over, I'll fill that one in. So something like that. And then once you're uh, you know done moving across, then you can... Go down to the next row and just say, okay, well, this one meets this one diagonally, so we'll go here. And then we'll also say, you know, that one's going to be white, and this one meets that one diagonal, so this one's going to be filled in. And so if you take it row by row like that, then uh, you, you can easily make sure that you get a checkerboard pattern instead of uh, darkening in a whole row at a time or darkening in squares that aren't in an alternating pattern. And then um, the last step, there's a little bit of shading going on. Um, that really is optional on this one. It just kind of, you can see it's just shading around the edges. Uh, so what that does is it just kind of makes it feel like it sort of bulges out off the top of the page, off the, the surface of the page. Um, and you know, it's kind of a cool effect. Not 100% sure if it's necessary. Now, the way that it's done here is that on the top and the left side, it's shaded inside the square, and then on the bottom and the right, it's shaded outside of the square. I think uh, either tomorrow or the next day, one of the days, we're going to be talking about uh, creating depth with our shading. So we'll talk more about that later. For now, just suffice to say that we can make it pop off the page with some shading. Pattern number two is called Necton. Necton is super easy. It's just parallel lines. Um, parallel means lines that go the same direction. So notice that it's sets of four parallel lines. So one, two, three, four. And then pick somewhere else to be. One, two, three, four. There's no rhyme or reason. They don't have to be in any particular place. Just move over, find another spot, and say one, two, three, four. And those are all vertical. You also want some diagonals and horizontals. And so I'm just going to go around and make sets of four parallel lines. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Maybe I'll do some horizontals. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You get the idea. Uh, there's no wrong way to do this. It's not like they have to be in any specific order or arrangement. You just make them however you want them. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then in the end, I've got this little gap in the middle. Just fill that with some lines. They don't even have to follow the pattern, but I guess they did. There we go. Uh, then, again, shading is done very similar to the way it was in the Knight's Bridge pattern. It's just, you know, shading around the edges. This pattern is super simple. The whole idea of this pattern is to not care which direction the lines are going. You might end up with some lines that go the same direction, like, multiple times in a row. You might end up with some lines that look like they overlap under each other. It almost has a woven look, but not quite. It's more like a bunch of things piled up instead of woven together. Uh, and the third pattern, Fescue. This one, again, super simple. Um, we're starting off the book with simple patterns. We'll get to some more complicated, complex patterns later. Uh, but Fescue, you just, you just make some lines that have like a, an ovally head at the end of the line. And these lines should go 
they should wave and wiggle and go in lots of different directions and they can overlap each other and there's really again no wrong way to make them and you decide when you're done I think I'm done no shading on that pattern I mean I guess there's things you could do but according to the book there's no shading so that's it. Um, we talked about strings. We talked about some patterns. We talked about tonal value of light and dark. Here we have a dark pattern and two lighter patterns. Uh, really, it's dark, medium, and light. This one has a lot of white space. So now uh, all that's left is to put those together into a Zentangle tile. Um, now it, it says here to uh, use the same process as yesterday. Um, and you can mix and match these three patterns with yesterday's patterns or just use these three patterns. I'm going to kind of do some of both. We'll start with our border and our string. I think what I'm going to do just to make a really interesting string is to have my border come in and then have a string that loops outside of that border. There we go. See? No wrong way to do it. And then it's time to make some patterns. which way is up and which way is down. I think I'll do it this way and I'll make my little letter mark the same thing I did last time like that. There you go. Uh, that's done for day two of one Zentangle a day. Today uh, not only did we make a Zentangle, we also learned three new patterns. We talked about light and dark patterns and we talked about different styles of strings. Tomorrow for day three we'll be talking about different ways to enhance patterns and we'll talk about making three-dimensional shading. If you're enjoying this series so far leave a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.